Well, hello, friends. Uh, Pastor Michael here again, coming to you from my personal lifestyle channel. You know, on this channel, I uh, actually share the commands of Jesus Christ, not necessarily to teach you or to influence you, but to actually read these commands for myself for the first time. These commands to me were like if I was uh, sitting in the conference of an older brother that was um, going to counsel me on going out into the world. That's kind of what this is representing to me. These uh, commands are pretty cool. And as you can see on the thumbnail uh, that started this video, and you can see it right here again, we're reading the commands from Jesus Christ. We're going to be covering 731 to 740. This is part 54. And uh, as you can tell there, I'm reading from the uh, um, easy to read version of the Bible. I enjoy the uh, easy to read version of the Bible. It's easy for me to understand it. Not so easy for me to read the words, so uh, I do read the reading glasses. So I do read with the reading glasses, and uh, I notice that they're getting a uh, glare from the, the screen, and I think that's a little irritating. So uh, I'm going to read the commands from my uh, laptop because I have them available on a slide, and uh, I'll be looking in my camera. I'm going to try to uh, not wear those reading glasses because I can see the slides pretty good. I think it's a distraction, so I want you guys to like the video. Um, if you give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe. Another thing that I do on my lifestyle channel is I share uh, my life journey after I've seen God, and uh, you can check out uh, my Sunday videos or go to the playlist, My Life After Seeing God. We're gonna get started on reading these week's commands right after these messages. You know, my friends, let's get started on reading these commands, and uh, I'll put a, a slide on the screen in front of me that uh, will be able to help you to read along. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, command number uh, 731, it says, Obey you, your leaders. You're going to see the, there's a bar that separates the command from the Scripture. I do that for a specific reason, because the commands are just that, the commands. And some of these commands uh, have multiple scriptures that back them up. So um, this command comes out of Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey your leaders. Be willing to do what they say. They are responsible for your spiritual welfare. So they are always watching to protect you. Obey them so that their work will give them joy, not grief. It won't help you to make it harder for them. Again, my friends, I'm going to have to talk about this from a, um, a personal standpoint, not from a pastor's standpoint. This is my personal channel. I don't always see uh, leadership of churches uh, looking out for the best interest of their people. Some of the leadership, uh, they don't take this in, into heart. So if my leadership was looking after me and looking out for my best interest, and then if they were responsible for my spiritual welfare and always watching to protect me, would they criticize me? Would they put me down? Or would they do that in an effective way that would build me up and encourage me? If you have an answer for that, uh, please make a comment below. Let's look at the next slide here. This command says uh, 732A, offer the other cheek. And you'll see that there's an A behind that. That means that there's going to be additional scriptures on the same command. This one comes out of Matthew 5, verse 39. But I tell you, don't fight back against someone who wants to do harm to you. If they hit you on the right cheek, let them hit the other cheek too. Now, my friends, I'm going to say that's hard to do. That's hard to do no matter where you're at. That's, that's about bullying, isn't it? But what this is showing me is to walk away from the encounter that I could have by not wanting to engage them in any kind of a confrontation. So we want to stay away from that. Let's look at command number 732B, offer the other cheek. This comes out of Luke 6, 29. If someone hits you on the side of your face, let them hit the other side too. If someone takes your coat, don't stop them from taking your shirt too. 
Man, my friends, the easy-to-read version really helps sum this up to what, what Jesus was saying to his disciples. Remember, Jesus was saying these things to his disciples so they could go out and teach this to all the nations. I'm one of Jesus' disciples, and I go through online internet to teach these commands to you people. It's very important, my friends. Let's look at command number 733. Ordain no one in a hurry. What does this mean? Well, it comes out of 1 Timothy 2, verse 22. Think carefully before you lay your hands on anyone to make him an elder. Don't share in their sins of others. Keep yourself pure. I've uh, often wondered about this scripture myself. I think sometimes uh, um, this is saying, uh, think carefully before you lay your hands on someone to make him an elder. So if, if my life isn't, just the way the Bible says it should be, I should not be appointed an elder. So an elder spends some time in his church to get to know the people so the people can see his servitude. But an elder also has to be married for a long time and work out his salvation and his leadership in his home before he can start on the house of God, don't you think? Don't share in the sins of others. So if you watch somebody over a length of time, you can see the pattern of their life unfold before you. But God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outside performance. Is there at any point that we can look at the indwelling heart of a man? Yeah, we do that through heart-to-heart -heart refinement school. But we do that through our own heart. We look at our own heart. But we also can look at the heart of our spouse if they're taking this course with us. This is not a course I'm teaching you. I'm just coming to you from my uh, personal lifestyle channel. This is important and people know that. It's a command number 734. Oh, nothing but love. This command really got my attention. And as you can see, it comes out of Romans 13, verse 8. Love others is the only law. This is in uh, bold red letters. It's a subtitle to uh, Romans 13, 8. You should owe nothing to anyone except that you will always owe love to each other. The person you love, the person who loves others has done all that the law commands. My friends, I've never looked at the fact that we owe love to other people. But that's what the Bible says. The greatest of these is love. We will know, they will know we are Christians by our love, by the fruits that we bear. Love comes out a multitude of times in the scripture, doesn't it? So we owe our love to other people. What does it mean to love somebody through the word of God? What is the character trait of love when it comes from God and Jesus? Here it is. To seek the very best in and for others. Let me repeat it. To seek the very best in and for other people. That's the character trait that Jesus wants to give us when we love other people. Let's look at the next command. Command number 735. Overcome evil with good. This comes out of Romans 12, verse 21. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with doing good. Overcome evil with good. I think that's a good scripture. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with doing good. How do we know what evil is opposed to what is good? And if you want to know where I came up with the uh, opposing nature of each fruits of the Spirit in my online course uh, that I'm doing on teaching people the way of Jesus, it says right here in Romans 12 too, don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil by doing good. So the opposing nature of goodness is evil, evilness. Okay, let's look at uh, um, command number 736, pass the time in fear. What does this mean? This comes out of 1 Peter 1, verse 17. You pray to God and call him Father, but you will judge everyone the same way. But what they do by what they do. Let me read this again, verse 17. You pray to God and call him Father, but he will judge everyone the same way. But what they do by what they do. By what they do. So while you are visiting here on earth, you should live with respect for God. The scripture also lets us know that we are visiting here on earth. If you listened and watched my uh, near-death event story in my life 
journey after seeing God, you know that we're just visitors here on earth. We have another home. That's in heaven. I seen the gates of heaven. I seen the presence of God. I think that's why I've been doing this ministry. Again, check out my playlist on uh, my life journey after seeing God. I'll link it in the video description below. Let's look at uh, command number 737. Pay your taxes. That's pretty straightforward. We're ordered to do that. Romans 13 verse 6 says, and this is why you pay taxes too. Those rulers are working for God and they give all their time to the work of ruling. My friends, I've got to, I've got to make a really good based comment on this. Not all of our leaders out there are working for God because we have a separation of church and state. We have a separation of church and our governing rulers. Not all of our governing rulers are working for God. You need to make a note of that. You need to be worthy of who you follow. They need to be worthy to have you follow them too. Let's look at command number 738. Pay just dues. This comes out of Romans 13 verse 7. Give everyone what you owe them. If you owe them any kind of tax, then pay it. Show respect to those you should respect and show honor to those you should honor. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, my friends, to pay your uh, dues. Command number 739. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This comes out of Romans 15, verse 11. The scriptures also say, Praise the Lord, all you people of other nations. All people should praise the Lord. What does that say? We're supposed to praise Mohammed or Buddha or uh, Joseph Smith. You know who that is. He's the Mormon leader. This says, praise the Lord, all you people of other nations. All people should praise the Lord, the Lord of heaven and the Lord of earth, if you make him the Lord of your life. Let's look at uh, command number uh, 400 or 740, part A. This is on preach, and you know that there's multiple scriptures going to follow this. This comes out of Matthew 10, verse 7. When you go, tell them this, God's kingdom is now very near. What does that mean? God's kingdom is now very near. Is that heaven or is that heaven here on earth or what does that mean? Let's look at command number uh, 740 B, preach. This B comes out of uh, Matthew 10 verse 27. I tell you all this secretly, but I want you to tell it publicly. Whatever I tell you privately, you should shout for everyone to hear. So in other words, when God speaks to your heart through the power of Jesus, he's going to tell you certain things that you need to tell other people. God speaks uh, to my heart daily. I remember when I uh, had my near-death event and I had that final episode, and it was my sixth time on that one evening. I remember God saying, when I pleaded for a second chance to come back, I remember him saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he went into the light. And then I woke up into a paralyzed body. But the point that I'm telling you is ever since I woke up, the more I mature in Christ Jesus to have that access to God, I hear God's voice more clearer and clearer the deeper I dive into this heart refinement program on the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus. That's, that's a huge thing, my friends. Let's look at the next slide here. Command number 740C on preach. C comes out of Mark 16, verse 15. He said to them, go everywhere in the world, tell the good news to everyone. That's part of the, uh, the Great Commission. That's where these commands come from. So go everywhere and tell the good news to all the people. My friends, if you are watching my video, would you please share it with your friends? Go back and find the playlist that starts the commands of Jesus out and share that with your friends. Send it to them in an email. Send it to them in a text message. Put it on Facebook. Let's get this going. Let's get this out to people. I don't know anybody else that's actually reading the commands of Jesus on their personal lifestyle channel on Facebook and not trying to teach people to follow this.
I'm not trying to teach you to follow this. I'm teaching you how I perceive it and how I see it in my life and what's been going on in my life. I'm not trying to teach you to follow these commands. That's between you and God. But I'm teaching you how I perceive it. That's it. Let's look at command number 740D, preach. D comes out of 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. Tell everyone God's message. Be ready at all times to do whatever is needed. Tell people what they need to do. Tell them when they are doing wrong and encourage them. Do this with great patience and careful teaching. Now, I'm going to go back and make a comment to what I was talking to you about uh, that the leadership of churches looks over their, their followers, okay? So if, if I'm not following the Bible correctly, now notice I said if I'm not following the Bible correctly, if I'm not following the Word of God correctly, I should be corrected on that. If my lifestyle does not line up with the Word of God, I should be corrected on that through a mentorship program, through a one-on-one -on -one Bible study. Maybe it's a group Bible study. But if you go to a Bible study and there's so many people in there, and it's just like, zoom, right over the top of your head, and you're not getting anything, you need to do a one-on-one -on -one Bible study with the leadership of your church, either the pastor or an elder. Don't let them just take it, zoom, right over the top of your head, and you're not getting anything out of it, all right? You need to be teaching people or if you're the one that needs to be taught, it says, tell everyone God's message. Be ready at all times to do whatever is needed. Okay, if you're a leader, you got to be ready to at all times to teach the word of God to people. Not your agenda, but God's agenda from the word of the Bible. That's what I'm talking about. Tell people what they need to do. Tell them when they are doing wrong. Okay, and encourage them. If you are leading somebody and they're doing something wrong, point it out to them in the Word of God and have them meditate on that. But if you're not following the way of the God and you're passing judgment, how can you help somebody through the Word of God when you're not following it yourself? Okay? Tell them when they are doing wrong and encourage them. How many times does a leadership put somebody down for doing something wrong, but forget to encourage them and praise them for what they're doing right? Just like a parent, just like a parent, if I'm constantly negatively correcting my child and not encouraging them, what good is that for them? What are they going to gain out of that? Are they going to gain any truth? Are they going to grow? It says, do this with great patience and careful teaching. I used to run a uh, ministry horse ranch, and I brought a lot of kids, a lot of youth, and a lot of adults through the gates of my ranch to teach them horsemanship on how it lined up with our heart. The theme of my ministry ranch was where hearts through a horse were healed. Why did I use a horse? Because horses are spiritual animals. Those horses will sense and feel what you're sensing. But I dealt with over 2,000 people on a one-on-one -on -one or a couple setting. That's where I learned the biggest part about helping people through the Word of God, not by preaching at them, but by my own actions to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Bear love, joy, peace, and patience. You bear those things against Misery, worry, frustrations, and that all causes bitterness, my friends. You've got to learn where you're at and what you're doing. You've got to know. You've got to understand how to help people. So many scriptures in this Bible. There are 66 books. There are over... Uh, 1,050 uh, 1, commands, 1,050 commands in the New Testament alone. But we fail to listen and remember and memorize the commands from Jesus Christ. And they're mighty important, my friends. They're mighty important. In the meantime, between now and next week's midweek mid Bible study, Next week, uh, I'm going to be talking about part 55. We're going to continue the playlist series on uh, 
um, reading the commands of Jesus. We'll be looking at command number 741 to 750 next week. But what I want you to do is I want you to consider uh, going to my uh, video right here on my uh, Sunday Lifestyle video that talks about my life journey after seeing God. In that video, I'm teaching other people leadership. I'm teaching other people to refine their hearts so they can in turn go out and teach other people. That's important, my friends. Until the next video, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you and may Jesus always bring you joy. I'll see you soon.